Are you wondering where you can take your newborn? If you are, stay tuned. Hi guys, welcome to my second YouTube video. I learned so much from filming the first one and I'm super, super excited today about filming this one for you. I'm Denny and I'm the creator of Practical Mummy Loves Luxury. I do lifestyle videos covering tips for expecting on new parents. As my channel grows, I will be doing some bilingual children book readings and also doing some luxury handbag reviews because who doesn't love luxury, right? So if you like videos like these, please subscribe and also click on the bell symbol button below to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. So going out as a childless free couple is really not the same as going out with a newborn. It may seem like you suddenly have no place to go. But I have a whole bunch of tips for you that will definitely make it easier. When I talk through these tips, I'm bearing in mind that the parent is going out with the child by themselves because clearly this is the most challenging situation. It just gets easier beyond that. I will speak about facilities that you need to look out for. And since I live in Adelaide, I will be referring to a few local places that fit this criteria. If you don't live in Adelaide, you can look for very similar places as well. Tip number one, do they have a baby change room? Now you may be thinking that you may not have to change the baby's nappy if you're only going out for a short period of time and you put on a fresh nappy immediately before you head out. However, if they do a number two, you're going to want to change their nappy when you are out. So it would then be really handy if there was a change room available. So if you're looking for a change room, but there isn't one, Sometimes have a look to see if there is a change table in the disabled toilet. So I'm going to show you a change table now because I only realized this really late in the piece. When you see a change table, you're going to pull it down and there are these two really convenient hooks on either sides of the table. And these are actually bag hooks. So you could hang your nappy bag on one side and your handbag on the other. And voila, you're good to go. In Australia, the places that have uh, change rooms are usually very large shopping malls. In Adelaide, that would be places like Burnside Village, Westfield Marion or Tea Tree Plaza, North Adelaide Shopping Village on O'Connell Street. Shopping malls are really convenient because it means that if you go to a restaurant within that shopping mall, you then can exit the restaurant and go and use the baby change facilities that's in the mall. In terms of restaurants that I'm aware of that has baby change facilities, are uh, McGill Estate Kitchen, House Restaurant in Handoff, and TGIF in Marion Westfield. One thing I definitely want to point out is at the Central Markets on Guja Street, there is one baby change room, one. When it's very crowded, the queue can get very long. So just bear that in mind if you're planning to go on a very busy day or very busy night. And you also can't access this baby change room if the market is closed. So that usually would be on a Monday. But don't stress, if your favorite place doesn't have baby change facilities, the option is to change the baby in your car boot. That's provided, number one, you brought your car with you. Number two, you don't have such a bad back that would be triggered if you're bending down low into the trunk of your car to change the baby. Number three, uh, that is not so cold outside that you'd be worried about taking half your baby's clothes off and then wiping it down with a wet wipe. To make sure that it's convenient to change a child in your boot, make sure that you do have a battery operated light because it can get dark in your boot, especially if you're parked in an undercover car park. Otherwise, if you have absolutely no choice, you can change your baby on the floor. Do remember to bring a change mat in your nappy bag so that you can then change them on the floor. I'll be doing a separate video on how to pack a nappy bag. So I'm not going to go into that in detail right now. Watch this space if that's something you're interested in. Tip number two is are there breastfeeding amenities? Clearly this would only be relevant if you're breastfeeding. In Adelaide, places that have breastfeeding rooms are the Westfield Malls 
and also Burnside Village, which has a really nice parent room. As I was doing some research, I also found this link from the Australian Breastfeeding Association that provides a list of nursing rooms available in all the states and territories across Australia. Just having a look, a look at the South Australian list, there are a number of nursing rooms that have been left off that list. So it's certainly not the most comprehensive list. If you have no idea where to start, perhaps start with that link. And I'll leave it in the description box below. Alternately, if you bring your car with you as well, it is an option to return to your car to breastfeed for a few minutes. Otherwise, there's also the option of using a breastfeeding cover. This is a cover that goes over yourself and your baby and it means that you can technically breastfeed almost anywhere. I will leave a few links in the description box below. There's plenty of these nursing covers on the market. I do suggest getting one that has a wire along the neckline because that will give the breastfeeding cover a bit more structure and it will hold the neckline of the cover away from your chest so that you can look down and see what you're doing, especially when you're trying to get baby attached. So tip number three is a place that you're going pram friendly. Does it have a whole bunch of steps that you have to go up or is there a lift conveniently there for you to use? In general, places that are wheelchair accessible or disable friendly will be pram friendly. Now, if you're going out with a group of friends and there may be a few strong blokes in the group that may be able to help you carry the pram and the baby up the stairs, then this is not so much of an issue. If you're going somewhere by yourself, I suggest calling ahead to ask. Some places might really surprise you. For example, my pediatrician's office was not very pram friendly. Fortunately, I had gotten to the appointment early. When I got there, I found that there was no ramp to get in through the front. I rang the receptionist and they said, oh, the accessible entrance was around the back. And it took me 10 minutes to get there by foot because I had to walk around a whole block of shops. Shops. So yes, if you're going somewhere by yourself that you've never been before, I suggest that you call ahead to ask or you get there really early. Tip number four, consider travel time. Is your baby one that gets really unsettled in the car? And is that going to really stress you out while you're driving with your baby crying in the back seat on their own? If they are, perhaps only go to places that are really close or take them out for short walks in a pram around your neighborhood. Now, if your baby really likes car rides, then it's not a problem, the further, the better. Tip number five, what kind of parking is available? Are there parent parking spots available? Parent parking spots tend to be a bit wider, which means that you're able to then open the door wider to get the baby in and out of the car. If there are parent spots, are there times where the place that you're going to gets really busy and it may be difficult to get a parent parking spot? Now, if you've gone to your favorite place and you've not been able to get a parent spot, look for a corner spot where there's a curb next to it so that you can safely open Open the door to get the baby out or like the one in the image that I've got on screen now that has a clear way. So in this picture the clear way is indicated by the yellow stripes that's painted on the ground and if you park on either side of this clear way as long as your baby is on the side of the clear way it means that you have a lot of room to get your door wide open to get your baby in and out of the car. If you cannot parallel park or reverse park this would be a good time to learn because it will give you the most options as to where you can park. The other thing about parking is to check whether parking is covered. In Adelaide, we have rainy days and also extremely hot days. On really hot summer days, when it's 45 to 46 degrees Celsius outside, a car can get really hot even after five minutes of being just parked. So you might have gotten down from the car and um, just picked up something really quickly with the baby. And when you get back to the car, the car seat is already really hot and it's gonna take them a few minutes to cool down. I have this little guy here, which is a battery operated fan. I have to admit, it's really not good enough for really hot days. I think this is useful only for um, days when it's 27, 28 degrees Celsius, but not a lot hotter. If the days are a lot hotter than that, I would look for a place to go that had covered parking. Otherwise, I wouldn't go out at all. Places with covered parking would be Burnside Village and North Adelaide Shopping Village. 
Tip number six is to check out your local playground. Although your newborn may not be able to play on any of the playground equipment yet, playgrounds are often family friendly. There's often other families there, so it can be a very safe and comfortable environment for a new parent with a newborn. While you're sitting at a playground, what you can do is also have a look at what equipment is there and to see what age group the playground would be suitable for. So there's very small equipment and you see toddlers in the playground getting on and off the equipment easily. Then you know when your newborn gets to that age, that playground would be suitable for them. There are playgrounds that are more suitable for older children and you would observe that there are bigger equipment and there are bigger children there. And perhaps if the playground is more suitable for older children, you might want to wait till your child gets older before bringing them there. Sometimes I find if there are a lot of older children, there's a risk that they could accidentally push over a toddler. So it means that you might have to provide a bit more supervision and sometimes even intervention. Hopefully not. <laughs> for a baby that's just learning how to walk, I prefer a playground that has rubber mats over a playground that has grass, wood chips, sand. Firstly, rubber mats don't shift like wood chips and therefore it provides a more stable surface for the baby to walk on and they're not going to fall over as much. Secondly, uh, when it's wood chips or when there's grass or sand, there could potentially be ants, sand flies or grass mites. I'd just rather not be, you know, trying to wave sand flies out of my face while I'm trying to chase my daughter. I also like playgrounds that are fenced in and dog free. It then means that you don't have to worry about a dog or a puppy coming up to try and play with your child. It also means that the risk of finding dog poo in the playground will be lower and you don't have to be so worried about your child exploring and finding dog poo to play with. My favorite toddler park is Cope Park in Norwood. Tip number seven is to explore your local civic centre. It often is instantly family friendly, it's usually pram friendly and it has baby changing facilities. It usually has a general library, it may also have a cafe and sometimes even an immunisation service which is really handy when your baby's up for the immunisation, you can just pop in and they get their jab and off you go. Also have a look at their notice boards. They often have posters up about child-friendly activities, sensory classes or water familiarization classes that you might be interested in. The other very important thing is that some local civic centers have a toy library. I cannot recommend a toy library highly enough. When I first discovered my toy library, I was so impressed with the array of toys that you could get there. And it really meant that I could borrow all these toys, I could save all this money, and I could save all this space from not having to possess these toys myself. And I've got a few toys here that are from my toy library. So we've got this guy here. I love this toy. I could do this for ages. So therapeutic. I think I love this toy more than my daughter. There's also these puzzles. My daughter's two and a half, so she can do these puzzles now. And they are super cool. And I've got another one here, which is, oops, my head just fell off. But don't worry, there's another one. So essentially the child can take the layers off and they can practice dressing her up again. Or I can practice dressing her up again. Here we go. Tip number eight, which is my very last tip, and this is something I wish I did myself. If your child is not yet born, this would be a perfect time for you to go and explore these places that you can potentially bring your newborn. It is so much easier to explore things in your own time while the baby is still baking in the oven. It is so much harder to get out with a newborn baby in their pram and you've got to carry all their stuff and then you have to adjust for the fact that they have to sleep and also feed. So in summary, check out if there are baby change facilities. If you're going to breastfeed, check out if there are breastfeeding facilities. Have a look to see if it's pram friendly. Also check out if there's any parent parking or covered parking. For a new parent in Adelaide, my top picks are shopping malls such as Burnside Village or North Adelaide Shopping Village on O'Connell Street. I quite like Westfield Marion as well. 
In terms of restaurants or cafes, McGill Estate Kitchen, house restaurant in Handoff. I forgot to mention that in Handoff on the main street, there are public toilets with baby change facilities. I also like the 24 hour O'Connell Street Bakery. It is pram friendly. I'm not sure it has baby change facilities, but if you need them, it then means that you can go to North Adelaide Shopping Village. Also have a look at your local playgrounds and your local civic center. So that's all I have for you today. I would love for you to leave a comment below if there is a favorite place that you love taking at your newborn. Even if you live in a different city or a different country, it means that anyone else watching this channel are able to read the comments and they will have an idea of a few places to go if they're bringing around a little one. I really hope you enjoyed that video and if you did, please click on the thumbs up button and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye bye!